on today's episode of Gathering the Kings. It's okay to pursue your dreams. It's okay to say, you know, what really is my potential? What is potential but opportunity now realized? You are listening to Gathering the Kings with Chaz Wolf, featuring fellow seven, eight, and even nine figure business owners who have real battle scars from business and life, but have prevailed as the king that they are designed to be. We welcome high performing entrepreneurs to the stage in order to reveal the real of the real on what it takes to build a successful business today. We dissect the good and bad decisions they've made along the way that give a true and accurate picture of the journey of success and how you too can get there. Through this dialogue, you will learn the value of growing your network and surrounding yourself with power players and kings like today's guest. Grab your pen and notebook because we're about to dive in. All right, everybody. I'm Chaz Wolf, gathering the kings. We got Ronald Walker here at the King stage. Welcome, brother. How are you? Uh, man, I'm doing good, bro. I'm doing good. How are you doing today? You know, we were just talking off air, and I had to hurry up and quick and, and hit the record button because we were getting into it like we'd freaking known each other all of our lives and just getting into the banter of business. I love having conversations with biz with guys like you about business. So before That's we get any I mean, further, how, how, how could we not do it with a beard like that you got, bro? Yes. <laughs> that, like, we got a vibe right away, bro. Right away, right away, yeah. If, and for the listeners, if, you, if you're new to the channel, if you're new to me, yes, there's a little bit of a beard action going on over here. But but Ron, you know, was just highlighting the the work yes. that the beard takes. But Ron, tell, tell us, what kind of business are you in, man? And what brings you to King Stage? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, uh, I'm actually in the real estate investing, best investing business. We focus primarily on single family. I got started about 10 years ago now. And, uh, you know, back then I thought it was a scam. You know, I, I got in and I was, uh, I was investing money and we, that a little bit, I was, I was managing people's investment and, okay. uh, and I learned about the wholesaling. I'll get into the kind of the story a little bit later and did my first deal, made a few thousand bucks. And from then it was just, it just kind of sparked from there. I, Got into yeah. owner financing. Uh, okay. When I went yeah. full time, did a lot of owner financing, built two portfolios. And uh, just from owner financing, subject to flips, wholesaling. And now I'm starting to, you know, tap my toes into the multifamily side for kind yeah. of the wealth, you know, the wealth building, kind of that net worth, that net worth. Yeah. Thing. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Everything else is fairly transactional, but that's all right because uh, money's got to come from somewhere to begin with. And so the transactions, wholesale, you know, flicks and flipping. You know, especially owner finance and subject to what a, what a great way to get in without any money. So we can definitely get into all that. So my question for you, before we get really deep into the story is at this stage, you've sold a couple portfolios. I mean, you're, yep. you're, you're, you're well off, dude. You're doing the thing. People right. listening today are looking at you as a star. You've made it <laughs> right. But, but my question is why, why do you keep pushing? Why are you tapping your toes into the real estate, a multifamily side? Why are you still pushing in grinding on the real estate or on the residential side? Like, why are you here still doing it? So for me, so for me, it's, you know, I could do the easy answer and I could say, you know, for my family, you know, and that definitely is an aspect is I want to provide opportunity to my kids and I want to show my kids from the family side and my wife for that matter, that it's okay to pursue your dreams. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's not just. Hey, my wife, my family and taking care of them, which is there. But I also want to show, and this is going to go to the second part that it's okay to pursue your dreams. It's okay to say, you know, what really is my potential? What is potential, but opportunity now realized. And yeah. so for me, it comes to a point where it's like, man, what can I really, do? right? Like, what can I really put? I want to contribute to the world. I have this philosophy that believes the more responsibility I take, the happier I'm going to be, which is kind of a flip than what most people think. Yep. And so for me, it's like, you know what? I not only want to be an example to my kids of, yo, these are the dreams. This is what I want to hit. I want to see how much I can accomplish, but also by contributing to the world and taking on that responsibility, Sean, you know what? Contribute. Coming from a place of contribution, when you do a house, like 40 people get Right. When you flip a house, you got contractors, you got the realtors, you've got yourself, yeah, you've got title yeah. companies, tons of people are getting paid. That's well, right. when that happens, that means that you're impacting the world in such a positive way. And, and then you can surround yourself with other people just like this. And so that's a big part of my why is 
I want to see what my potential is, right? I want, I want, I want to see how far I can go because I've got, I've got a lot of pain in the past where people said I couldn't do it, you know? And so it's like, yo, there's sure. an aspect of me like, who's wrong? Yeah, of but course. Then there's the other side of like, man, every, you know, people told me I had a bunch of potential and I realized I don't want to die with potential. Like yeah. I don't realize potential and yeah. see what I can really realize. So that's, that's a big aspect of what drives me just on a daily basis. Yeah, I love how you how you started off saying your kids and, and your wife because part of your potential is leading them. Part of your potential is showing them their potential. And how can you show them theirs if you don't know or even maybe tap into to what it is that you are? Dude, I love that because one of the things I think we talk about is everyone talks about like sacrificing for their kids. And that's a good thing. But what ends up happening is they limit themselves to either be around them more or they say, well, I right. can't be successful because and, and it's almost like this cycle that perpetuates, right? Where it's, it's, you know, I'm giving up for them and they become really a scapegoat for you not pursuing what you want, but right. why not do what is really important to you or your, what you dream about for them, right? Show yeah. them you can have an amazing family life and accomplish your dreams and go to Ireland for three months and run your business remotely. You know, like you can do both. I think yeah. a lot of times it's this false dichotomy and, uh, and that's just super important. Yeah, I, I can I can tell it in your passion. One thing that you just said that you literally just turned the mic upside down on all the listeners is that you can run your business remotely from Ireland. Yeah. What the heck? Is there a story there? Have you been oh, to yeah. Ireland? So, uh, so me and my wife, we got married. We got married in 2010. Funny story. I actually booked the honeymoon without her knowing told her she was not happy about it. So we canceled it Oh, and we decided to go to Ireland and okay. And it was an amazing, I'm so glad we did that. And we spent a week there in Ireland when we first got married. Well, one of our dreams has always been to go and live over there. So back in 2017, was it 2017? I think it was 2017. We, we went over for three months and that was the first time I ran out a small little team in Dallas, Texas Yeah, that went over. And the time difference was different. So we kind of had our fun in the mornings until about two o'clock when 2 p.m., which was 9 a.m. here. In business time. And uh, I worked from 2 p.m. to midnight and hung out there in the mornings. Well, we did the exact same thing during COVID. So COVID hit and we decided we wanted to go again. I took a gamble and all of the Airbnbs were down about 70%, right? Because nobody had any business. That's right. We flew over there literally in the heart of COVID. You had to quarantine for 14 days. Right. Almost in, we get to the border and the guy's like, so you stay with family? And I'm like, nope. He's like, <laughs> so, you know, you have to quarantine, right? Yeah. We're here for, you know, four months. Yeah. And he kind of looked at our passports, looked at us, looked at my kids. I got four little ones. Uh huh. And, uh, he's like, all right, whatever. And he just stamped and let us what? in. What? Oh. And so anyway, we got to do that. So we, we stayed there for, uh, for four, we actually stayed in England for, uh, so we're in Scotland for two weeks, England, Northern England and Yorkshire Dales for a month and then in Ireland for two months. And uh, yeah, all that while running the business room. Of course. Awesome. Well, I, I point that out. I mean, first off, that sounds incredible. And, uh, and to go, I've never been, I mean, been to Europe, so let alone to, to be there for multiple months. But I think for the listener, I just wanted to kind of just splash them in the face with that little sprinkle. Because they're, they're, they're busy, right? They're yeah. busy being busy and they're trying to scale up and they're, they're here listening because they're on their way to, you know, meet with a client or they're on their way to a job site or they're, they're on their way to do something in the business. And they've taken note that, you know, Ronald Walker's on the, st on the, on the stage today and they're trying to get something. And, and I can just, I can just imagine being in that spot because I remember being in that spot, just trying to figure out what key unlocks the rest of this thing and to hear you say that you just picked up and left is a little bit of a like screw the top off the, the lid and just mind blow everybody and right. so not to say that that is like a look at him and 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 like a ooh shiny thing but more of a like i bet you you could probably do the same thing it's just probably the systems and the people that he had in place that you don't yet and so i, I definitely want to encourage us to be able to get you some well, good on that side you know what it really boils down to is there's a book called Clockwork. I have it right here by 
Mike McAnaway. Anyway, he talks about in this book, what are the core things in your business that need to be done? He calls it the queen bee role, right? What, mm. who is the baby maker in your business, right? Like where, where do the babies come from? Where's the money yeah. come from? Yeah. And then insulating that and making sure that whatever that role is, is happening over and over. Right. And that's really what it takes is it takes you saying, you know what? I want to go to Ireland. I want to buy a blank. I want to do X. And getting excited about that. Not so much of setting a goal and like, oh, how am I going to do this? Well, find something you're excited about, right? And when yeah. you're excited about it, your brain will start trying to figure out ways to do it. And if you can isolate specifically in your business, the things that make you the money, usually it's sales, it's delivery of some type of product, and it's servicing those customers. You can figure out a way to get that stuff covered and then you're the owner supporting those functions well now you have an opportunity to step back and really be an owner and that allows you to travel and allows you to it doesn't mean you're not going to work it just allows you to do a different type of work what you're doing yeah that would be my encouragement is every business can do that. i was talking to my neighbor a tree business can do that yep. you know, a landscaping business can do that a real estate business can do that all, all, all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love that what you just said, because it, at that point, when you remove the X's and the O's of whatever niched business that it is, <clears throat> you just have business. You just have growing, scaling, team building, leadership, sales, marketing, all of the things that like actually grow a business. And we can get caught up in the X's and the O's of removing the tree or laying the mulch or doing the real estate deal. And those are important. Don't get me wrong, but even it's funny because I've had a lot of folks ask me specifically about gathering the Kings podcast and also mastermind is like, we, we specifically ask for people in lots of different industries so that we cannot talk about the X's and the O's, <laughs> right? If you remove the X's and the O's, what do you have left? Well, cause once you, once you get business and I think you know this once you learn business principles sure the technique right the the uh, i think the book uh, emeth talks about it the, uh, the technician the one who yep. does the work yep. is very specific but owning a business it's a game business ownership just like you said and so i think i think that's fantastic right i think that's awesome that you're doing that and kind of removing this facade of it's it's about how good can I paint the picture? It's like, no, some of the best painters in freaking the universe painted the faces only and hired other people to paint the other parts, right? And it's like, yep. that was their niche. And they just built a business. I love it. 100%. Love it. Okay. Let's talk about how you got started, man. We know why you're pushing. Yep. You've already given us so many nuggets already. Uh, we could probably just end the podcast here. But but <laughs> since we have time, hey, tell us how you got started. Do like, it. How did you get started in business? Like, how? what, what, what was the itch? Yeah. So, so I guess how, how I got started in business. So I grew up and uh, my dad owned his own company. So my dad's owned an asphalt Makes maintenance sense. company for okay. freaking 50 years. And so I was eight years old out on freaking paver in Alaska. I grew up in Alaska. Wow. And sitting on the paver and falling asleep while asphalt was doing, I was eight years old shoveling asphalt. Right. Yep. Uh, and so when I was 16, we did a thing called seal coating, which is like sealing the cracks on, on the pavement after a while. And I yep. approached my dad and I said, Hey dad, if I could, if I could drum up the customer base, could you split the materials and we split things 50, 50. And that was the first time that I really did anything like that. Before that, my dad paid me really well when I was a kid, uh, even, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, I had more money than my friends because my dad paid me to be out there working. Yeah. Not that I necessarily wanted to be. <laughs> he did pay me, so I give him that. And uh, so that's where I started. I I, uh, I kind of picked it up. I did a whole bunch of seal coating jobs. I got a bunch of my friends to come help. Paid them ten or twelve bucks an hour. Yeah. Back in um, we're talking like two thousand five. Yeah. So yeah. they're coming out helping me. I'm kind of. I would have totally come and work for you. <laughs> Basically, hey, come and help me. I will hang out. We'll do the job. You won't yeah. have to deal with my dad at the time because he was kind of crazy. Yeah. Sorry, dad, if you listen, <laughs> but so that was kind of where it got. Well, I, I, so I left, I went to school after that. I moved out of Alaska, I moved down to Dallas, Texas. I decided I was like, I'm not doing business. Like screw this. Like I do not like, not that I didn't like the money, 
Okay. Didn't I didn't like the environment I saw business growing up. Like it was a okay. very intense environment, lots of yelling. The paving crew was intense. Sure. I was like, yo, this isn't for me. So I went and got a job at Sprint Phone Company. The yeah. Cell phone company. Yeah. A job doing sales at eight bucks an hour. I had never once made eight bucks an hour in my entire, I was 10 years old making $10. Just kind of right. giving you So yeah, I go to work there. I jump into sales. That's when I first, I read books on cold calling and I started okay. doing that. Two years, worked my way up to being a manager and I was making 40 grand a year. And I just got married. It was 2010, just got married. And I was like, this is why I was making more money at 16 than I am now. Yeah. So I talked to my wife and I'm like, you know, I need to go into business by myself. And I, I just didn't know what to do. Yeah. So I left Chase or excuse me, I left Sprint. I got a job at JP Morgan Chase just as a personal banker where you walk in, they sell you a credit card, that kind of thing. Sure. Within a year, I had gotten promoted to the private client division. And now I am helping an investment banker basically manage money, right? Within a year. So I'm introduced to this world of my lowest client was 250,000 and our top clients had $5 million, right? So that okay. was kind of our niche. Yeah. And at this time, I'm like, yes. you know, at this point I'm making about a hundred grand a year and it's still like, like there's gotta make, be more, like I'm making the bank. I, they have this little chart of how much like you make the bank. I make <laughs> the bank like $10 million. Right. And I'm making like a hundred thousand. Right. And I'm thinking, what the freak? Like, I need to figure something out. Like, so one of my clients, he was the third top client I had, his name is John. I won't say his last name, but his name is John. He, he did a $3 million deposit into his account. Yeah. And I'm thinking, cause I get notified whenever they get deposits and I can call them and chat with them. Yeah. Me and John had a pretty good relationship. He answered the phone like every time I called, which is not normal in sales. And uh, so I called him up. I was like, Hey John, just want to let you know, I saw, you know, your $3 million deposit came in, blah, blah, blah. We finished the call yeah. and I was like, John, bro, what do you, <laughs> right? Like, I was like, like, what do you actually do? And he's like, he's like, Ronnie. So this one, I just flipped an apartment complex. I was like, okay, well, and at this point I'd helped it. Like his mom passed away. I helped them move a whole bunch of family money. I was, we we're pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, dude, do you mind if we like got to lunch and just like, you point me in the right direction. Like I'm trying to figure out how to build my wells. Yeah. So he did, and uh, he pointed me to this single family group and uh, called Lifestyles Unlimited. I went there, they were doing a whole bunch of teaching of different stuff. Their model is not the same as it used to be, but I went to a little seminar and in the seminar, the guy's like, it's about building rental properties. And the guy was like, you know, I, you know, I had these three properties and I was going to rent them, but I decided to just call up a couple of investors and they bought them from me and uh, I wholesaled them to them and I made 18 grand and five. I was like, whoa, 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 what? Shit, like, I'm, I'm sitting in the audience, right? I'm listening. I'm like, what? He just made $18,000 in right. hours? Okay. Yeah. So I get home, I email the guy, and uh, he emails me back. He's like, yeah, the blah, blah, blah. Points me to this, uh, this guy called Sean Terry. At that point, the course, the real estate course was $2,000. Sure. I read his free book. I was like, I can do this. I can send things in the mail. I can call people. Like I call people. I just cold call my whole life anyway. Yeah. Bought the $2,000 course literally on a webinar. That was like a countdown, you know, like yeah. everyone knows <laughs> now that I didn't know. And uh, bought it the day before Christmas for $2,000 and uh, followed the whole curriculum, bro. And, Changed uh, your life. First deal three months from then. And that was how I got started. After that, I did seven deals in the next 11 months. And then I went full time. Partnered with a lawyer, went full time into real estate. My uh, two weeks at my job, November 15th, wow. 2013, 2013. And it's been, it's been history from there. So that's, that was my journey getting into from a kid to jumping yeah. in, just how I got involved. Yeah, I love the mindset of of being raised inside of a, of a business home. Interesting that, that those factors pushed you away, you know, but obviously it was in your DNA, right? Like yeah. to be able to remove the cap and to be able to go for more and, and strategically think of building wealth. Like you can't do those things right? working for somebody else, obviously. And absolutely. Well, and one of the things I realized, man, is so one of the things I didn't want is I didn't want the environment 
that I was, I was in, I was in a very, just, there was lots of yelling, lots of, you know, screaming and what's the word I'm looking for animosity. Right. Okay, and that's yeah. what I didn't want. I didn't want from the business to after home, just this crazy environment. Yeah. So I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing that, right. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to do this. But one of the things that my dad was, that just blows my mind to this day. And uh, people have said this about me too is my dad's like one of the only people I know who's like, okay, I need to make 150 grand. All right, let me go work. Boom. I made 150 grand. All right, cool. We're good. Right? Like people are like, how the heck do you do that? Just, yeah. <laughs> and I kind of learned that just growing up in it, like it was normal, right? Cause he's just, right. your environment's normal. And when I went to work for somebody else and it was just this, monthly paycheck yeah you had sales but it was like a small yeah. percentage of what you did yeah and i was like man that's why business ownership is so powerful is yeah there's no floor but you can go out and make 100 grand this month you can go out and make 100 grand 200 grand next month if you put in the work and you get the results and you provide the value you can't do that if you provide the value to like a chase or to these other companies they're just going to give you a small percentage of yeah. the value you yeah. provide to the customers, which isn't, but yeah. for me, I was like, you know what? I'm okay with the risk, right? Like yeah. worst case scenario, I've worked my way up in these companies. I've got some good relationships. I can make 10 phone calls and get a job. Yeah. You, you can always come back and be able to pay bills. Yeah. The risk there that you're, that you're saying was worth it, which, and some people just determine that it's not, and that and that's okay. Right. They're not listening here probably today, but it, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the floor that you mentioned, when you, the only way to remove the ceiling is to remove the floor. I heard that a couple of weeks ago. I thought it was a super that's interesting good. way to say that, you know? And so that's the risk that you're talking about. And so I think that, that everybody listening today has that inside of them and going, okay, I left my job. I'm not doing it anymore. Even... Even if I work myself into the grave, I'd rather do that for myself, right? And so now I want to get into some of your decision-making because you not only have taken that risk tolerance, if you will, like the yep. listener, but then you've been able to create systems and things around it so that you can have peace at the house and so that the business doesn't strangle your personal life, like you said, that it, it felt like when you were a kid. So tell us a good decision that you've made that has helped you get to that place specifically that maybe the, the listener just hasn't gotten to yet. They're still in the chaos. Yeah. So I think race, the connection, the, uh, the integration of personal life and work. Mm. I think a lot of people are trying to separate it as far as possible. And so you come up with an environment where, you know, when people go to work and their kids are at home, the kids never see you work. Right. They never, they're not, they don't see it. They don't see the passion. They don't see what you're building. They, they're removed from it. Dad is gone. I'm at home or I'm at school or whatever that looks like. Right. And so one of the things that I aim to do is I aim to integrate my life or work personal life or integrate. That's why I can, you know, constantly working, which people don't understand, whether it's my siblings or my friends or this. But at the same time, I have infinite flexibility because I'm meeting my, you know, my responsibilities. I'm meeting my goals. I'm, I'm yeah. and so that ability to integrate your life is, yeah. I think is critical and it can be very difficult, right? It can be difficult knowing, you know, what, I'm, I'm going to take my kids to the zoo Tuesday at 2 PM, but if I get call. I might need to be at the zoo and tell my wife, Hey, I need to step away and take this call for 10 minutes. Right. Well, you're not like, I thought we were at the zoo. It's like, yeah, we are, but we get to be here because I do this. Right. And, and being okay with communication and talking. And so I think that's an aspect from the piece that I feel like has gone very, very well. I and mean, it just takes communication, right? It takes, yeah. it takes learning. There's a book called crucial conversations. There's four. Yeah. Yep. Dude, that book will change your whole life. Right. Yeah. It'll change your marriage. It'll change your, your kids. It'll change when you have hard conversations with people right? And, and just being able to say, okay, I need to get, what do I really want here? What am I trying to communicate? What's the story I'm telling? Am I vilifying someone? Are they vilifying me? Is it safe for us to talk and just opening up some of those conversations yeah. and on the same page? 
each one of us from a family perspective is, is huge. Yeah. From the business side, you know, as far as good decisions on the business side, I feel like I made every mistake in the book, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you feel that way. I totally feel Yeah. I feel like I've made so many mistakes. It's insane. But one of the things I would say, I would say two things. So the mark, I'm going to put you on. Let's do this. I'm going to put you on. <laughs> okay. If you could measure someone's leadership, mm. what one measurable would you measure to determine if they're a good leader or not? One thing. People are following them. That's amazing. I love, I love it. So people are following you. I'm going to add an additional slight twist to it. Okay. So my measurable is that the people around me are making more money. Yeah, love it. And their life is getting better. So it's not just people are following, which is like a big followership, but specifically sure. my team. Yeah. And so I would say that the ability to take the people around you and show them how to make more money creates loyalty. And oh, it yeah. creates people that, hey, I'm in it for you. I'm in it for us. I'm in it for me. And we're trying to win together at a big level. Yeah. And, and when you can do that with your family, like, hey, I want us to, I want us to go to Ireland as a family and spend time together. I want us to do really cool stuff together. I don't want to just provide the money. I want to do it together. Yeah. Hey team, I want to go out there and I want to flip these houses. And eventually we want to turn around and develop an ancient building in Ireland. Like this is what we want to do. And when you start doing that and they start seeing, yo, this is really awesome. Yeah, That's leadership, right? When you can paint that vision and you show them the roadmap. They start seeing, you know, I was, before I came to hang out with you, Ronnie, I was making 40 grand. I'm hanging around with you. I'm making 120 and I might make 250 in the next year. And a half, right. And, and so yeah. to me, I think that's really good. And it comes to, in my business, specifically isolating good properties to invest in, yeah. right? What does that criteria look like? How do I know what this property is? What is a, what am I anticipating making? What's the worst case scenario? What's the best case scenario? Yeah. Cause I'm also taking people's capital, right? Like I'm asking right. people for money saying, yo, give me 300,000 so we can put into this property. Well, they've got to know that this is a really good property to put it in. And so that's where I would say is been my biggest source of strength is as a leader, I should be impacting the people who invest with me, who work with me, family in a way that causes growth and more money to be produced. Yeah. Because dude, if you come to work with me, right? Chess. Let's say you come to work with me and you're like, I'm all in. I love your vision, right? You're like, dude, let's do this. Let's go. Or we, we decide to, to do something together and we're pumped up for two years, but in two years, man, you're having a hard time making your, hitting your bills. We're not right. really getting much. We might be great friends. We might be able to go to the beach together. We might be able to hang out and talk business. We might be able to do our hobbies together. All of that's cool. But eventually you're going to ask yourself, like, you know what? Like, we're not really doing it. Like I, my, my life isn't, isn't any better. Like I'm str I could do better if I found somebody yeah. else. Yeah. And, uh, and so I think that to me has been a core trait since the yeah. very beginning of, I want to be a really good leader. I want to show you how, what your goals are and what my goals are. If they align, we can run together until they're yeah. no longer aligned. And yeah. then we can just say our separate ways and be friends still. I, I love everything that you just said. It, it, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say it in a specific way to be able to have the listener take some notes. But one of my team members just did a presentation. She was talking about the sales process specifically and creating raving fans through the process, but it applies. And the last step of this process is that they have to believe whether it's, this is a client, this is your spouse, this is a friend, whoever it is that you're taking through the process of relationship, in this case, we were talking about specifically in business for sales, is that the prospect has to believe that you in their life makes their life better. And that's, that's so it. True. Like, that's how you close. That is the yeah. only way that you close somebody. And it doesn't have to be manipulation. It doesn't have to be, of course, there's other steps. You got to, you got to be likable. You got to build trust and they have to yeah. understand what it is that you're doing. But, but that last key final step 
is that they genuinely have to believe that their life is better with you in it. The done deal. And to your point, that's what you're saying is that that's so powerful. Even at a friendship level, it's like, I'm willing to invest the time. I'm thinking of one buddy right now. We have done at least a Zoom call, sometimes multiple or even two or three a week for like almost three years. Basically, the, the pandemic hit and we're like, boom, how do we get on the call with each other? Once a week, twice a week, once a day for a period of time. Because you're willing to invest the time because I was getting so much in return, the value I believe that my life was better with that phone call or with that person specifically in my life. hundred percent. Because if you don't, it's, if they don't believe it, it's. You can't take action. You can't like, <laughs> you won't keep showing up. If, if, if we don't, if there is no value to your point, then we stop going to the beach together. We stop talking about business together. We stop doing the weekly call. We stop, we yeah. stop because now it's just a task. Dude, that. That's so good. They have to believe that their life will be better. I love that. That's a great summary. You know, the, I loved how you said specifically about your team. And I want to let this one more nugget here for the listener is that as the owner, it sounds like Ron and I have, have had a similar perspective on this with our teams is that if I can try to build a business and some of my businesses don't allow for this as much because they're retail and it just, it kind of just is what it is with, you know, the margins, but. I want to pay my people as much as possible, right? As much as possible. And, and I want it to grow and I want them to grow. And so what Ron's saying is like, when you pour into your people, when you're a good leader, you pour into them because they, they make more money. They have better lives. They have better marriages. They have their better fathers or mothers. Like they have better lives because you were in it. And that's why right. it goes back to the point we were just making. They actually believe that their life is better with you in it. So they're going to continue to follow you. Ron, let's switch the coin or flip the coin over. Tell me about a bad choice. I know you made a bunch of them, as we yeah. all have, but give me that super dirty, gross story, that bad mistake. Yeah, so it's funny because I just thought of one that I did not write down in this, uh, this specific one, but, and it comes to the pay side that you just mentioned, is you can be so generous that you actually hurt the business by paying people too much. So true. And and they're not ready for that, right? Where so true. Uh, had an employee, she's probably just an amazing employee. She, she's fantastic. One of my first employees when I, when I jumped in the business in the real estate side. And uh, we elevated her very quickly. We paid her quite a bit. And I realized that I was overpaying to what the marketplace was producing. Right. And, um, and, and things didn't work out through one. Actually, I, so I was partners with a guy. I sold that aspect of the business to my old partner. She stayed with him and uh, she stayed with him for like a year and then left. And when she left, she had a really, really tough time getting another job that paid that well because yeah. her market value wasn't actually what the market produced. And so it actually right. really disrupted their life yeah. in a major way. And so I would say that's a huge mistake where it can either be a burden on the business or totally. the person thinks they're paid more than they think or they're being paid really well. Yeah. So I would say that's, that is a don't overpay, like find out what a job is really worth yeah. and pay that and don't feel bad by you making a lot of money. In the world, right. Yeah. Don't feel bad that your company is providing value and it's not going to this one person. Their pay is dictated on that particular job and their skill level and then allow room for growth so they can make more money in advance. Yeah. That's uh, great perspective. I would say the biggest, mis the biggest mistake I've made over and over again. Let me put it that way. Right. I just once. <laughs> and uh, I would say is the concept of group thing mm. in my companies. Interesting. And, uh, and what I mean by that is when you start getting good people around you, there's a very fine line between let me hear your feedback mm. and let me get your thoughts and let's all come to a consensus together. There's a very fine line between that. If you ever watch Star, do you watch Star Trek? Are you a Star Trek fan? You know, I'm I'm not. I can I can throw up the side. I think that's the there. Sign, we go. You know? Yes, <laughs> yes. That's about as far as it goes. Yeah. So in Star Trek, I like to say so. Like in the Next Generation, which is uh, um, Patrick Stewart is the the main cast member. When he's, I do this for my team stuff. When he is the leader of his team, he takes, hey, okay, weapon specialist, give me your thoughts. Crewman, give me your thoughts. Data analyst, give me your thoughts. 
and then he makes a decision. Right. He doesn't. He doesn't so, try to come together. He makes the decision of what to do, and it's on him. Yep. One of the things that, as a leader, especially if you're more in the realm of relationships, so I have one of the rarest personality tests or the DISC test. I'm a super high D. But I'm like a 99 S. So I'm a high D high S, which means I'm super high in relationships, but I'm also very task oriented. And they conflict because I'm like, yo, we need to get this done. But then I'm also very concerned about the relationship. Right. And so what happens is you surround yourself with really good people. And what happens with groups, group think is you actually, it's not actually good. It actually right. dumbs down to the lowest common denominator and it causes your business to derail because it's like, okay, what can we all agree on? Okay. Right. All right. Let's do that. Actually not the best thing. where if, as you start getting people around you, get their advice, but, and this is where I've had to, I've had to really been like, okay, got this guys. Let's give me 24 hours to think about it rather than me making a decision today. Right. I can make a decision. Rather yeah. than trying to figure out how to please everyone in this sense, it's, hey guys, give me 24 hours and I'll decide what we're going to do. Yeah. And be the one who makes the decision. Cause if you don't, I've, I've lost, I've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars by making decisions that I knew were wrong. Yep. But I was unwilling to go through the conflict yep. of like, I've, I've gone down this path before. I know that marketing channel is a work, but I know like. I know you think you listen to this thing and like, right. all right, let's just do it. And I know that going down this, I'm going to lose $20,000. Yeah. That is probably my number one mistake that I've done probably my first five years. Every time I developed a core team around me or let someone go and come in yep. is I want them to feel like they can contribute. Totally. And what I've done is instead of just allowing them to tell me what they think, and being like, you know what? That's a really good point. I appreciate you. Here's what I'm actually going to do. Right. Is I would actually be like, all right, let's try to do that. So I can show you it doesn't work. Yeah. And uh, that's a huge mistake in business guys. Like you are the only one as, as the entrepreneur, yeah. as the leader of the company, you're the only one with all the information, right? You're yeah. the only one who knows all the details. You know what you did six years ago. And why it worked and why it didn't. And your guy that's freaking amazing, but doesn't quite know the nuances that's been with you for a year. Right. Doesn't quite know that. And you need to trust yourself. Yeah. And you know what I found too, in that, in those moments, you know, the, the person that you're talking about, your guy, your expert guy, at least I've figured this with my, with my teams is that, cause I've, I've had the same thing where I've, I've opened up the floor too much or too often or too long. That's probably yes. what it is. And, and, and really on the other side of the table, your people are, they want you to make the decision. They don't really want to make the decision. They want to be heard. Yes. And that's really what we're concerned with is I want them to be heard. I want them to be able yep. to contribute. I want them to feel part of the family because they are, I do actually value them. I do actually value their opinion, but at the end of the day, they're expecting you to do exactly what you just said, which is take their advice. And sometimes you're going to use it. Sometimes you're not. And, and when I've gotten into that, I've actually gotten the response of not necessarily like, thank goodness that you're here to make a decision, but like, it's, it's a better response from them because they've been waiting for you to make the decision anyway. They know that you're going to like, maybe open it up and they're going to, and you're going to discuss, but at the end of the day, it's your business and they know it and they're okay yeah. with it. <laughs> Dude, well, they're that's waiting what for you. to learn is people like, if not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Some people just want to follow the guy who is the good entrepreneur and wants to be on the team. Right. And so they want the responsibility to fall on you. They don't want the stress of being number one, right? right? You know what that stress is like dealing with everything that happens. You're the face, you're the name, the marketing, all of it comes back to you, right? Yep, that's right. And those guys don't want that. They want their responsibility and what they're supposed to do. And it's unfair as the leader to put that on all of them, we have got to be the lead. We've got to stand up and say, this is what's for the business and this is the direction. And if you're wrong, it's okay to be like, you know what? We made a mistake. We're pivoting. We're going yep. here. Yep. And so I would say that's probably my biggest mistake is probably group, right? Yep. Is, is just that. 
concept and being able to really guard myself. Yeah, it's huge, man. I appreciate you sharing that. I think that you could even take that same group think mindset and apply it to friends, family, other entrepreneurs. I mean, obviously there's, you know, there's, there's ways to get around people who are, are doing really cool things, but sometimes what they're doing or even ideas that they have are applicable. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it just encourages me to hear some of the guys that I'm super close with of what they're doing. It doesn't mean that I need to do it too. It just means that like, okay, that's good. It's encouraging. I'm walking away. I've got one, one guy specifically, you know, best bud of mine. And, and we, we we're long gone after this now, but for many early years, it was like, he would take offense. Like he would share his advice. And then I'd be like, I appreciate that. But when you don't do it, it doesn't look like you appreciate it. Right. And it's like, no, I, I, I really do. I, I didn't ask accidentally. I really did want to know your opinion, but at the end of the day, I still got to make the decision that's right for me. And I think that this is what's best. So I think that that group think perspective is huge. And so well, I appreciate you sharing. Yeah. And as an entrepreneur, dude, I love that you say that because that is something that as an entrepreneur, I think a lot of us, I think is not talked about as kind of a pro tip is guys, people are going to tell you what they think and you've got to be able to be confident enough. Let's put it that way. I'm saying, dude, I really appreciate that. And then if they follow up, hey, did you do that? Be like, you know, I, I actually didn't. And here's why. Right. And, and being able to do that is very, especially if you're relational, right? If you don't like mm -hmm. conflict like me, right. it's very difficult to do that. But you will gain so much respect, guys. There's a book called The Challenge Yourself. And it's, it's not about being light. It's about being seen as someone who's credible. Yeah. And that, even with your friends, it's like, dude, I really, pre actually, you said one, two, and three, and they got me thinking, and my situation is nuanced in these ways, and that's like blank. Right. And then all of a sudden, they're like, wow. Yep. This guy, like, why didn't you take my advice? It's like, sorry, bro. Yeah. And it just shows yourself as a, I love, I love that. So. Yeah, the explanation behind it is, is it's, it's just good communication. All right, Ron, we got a hustle. We got the speed round. Are yes. you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. I knew this was going to be a good one because, man, we just, we, we, it sounds like we could go for hours. Yeah. But that's okay. We'll have plenty of time. Don't worry. Speed round for now is this. First question. If you can only pick one metric in your business to track forever and ever and ever, just one, what would it be? The brick metric, which Ooh. is my business, is number of offers made on properties. It's the a brick metric is the number one thing that drives revenue in your business. And there's a lot of other things you can track, but if you can figure out what your brick metric is, um, that's all you have to look at to see if your business is going to succeed or not. Yep. Got to have enough in the pipeline. Yep. Okay. Uh, you've already mentioned a couple books, but specifically anything different or would you keep it the same? Book recommendation for a six-figure owner trying to scale to seven. Six-figure trying to scale to seven, I would read Scaling Up by Vern Harnish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great book. What's your one? From that book, it is probably how to manage the complexity of additional team members and how to manage cash. Yeah, both extremely important things, okay? You've kind of already mentioned this a little bit, but I'll give you the chance to answer. Do you intentionally network or mastermind with other entrepreneurs? Yes. And why? Uh, why? Because I believe one plus one equals five. One thing you could Good. say, you know, uh, owner of Walmart when he was alive, I can't think of his name. Sam Walnut, yeah. He, he used to go to Kmart's all the time and just take one little nugget to Walmart and one nugget can change your business. One relationship. Yeah. Um, one guy is one guy right now is one of the guys that partner. With. We make a hundred grand a year. One person can introduce you to one person and person can bring two employees and those two employees can make you $2.5 million this year. There's so much value in being a worker and a builder of relationships. Yeah. And there's different ways to do that. You can join masterminds. You can pay, you know, 30 grand a year and you can join, you can connect with people and kind of be a consultant. Hey, what are you trying to do this year? And then help them figure out ways to help them. You can give gifts. There's lots of different strategies to do that, but yes. coming from the relationship King himself, <laughs> <laughs> the high S. Okay. That's a super incredible answer. You went, you went, you went deep on that one, man. I think relationships are probably the one of at least it was for me, my story. It was the, the most underrated, undervalued activity that I, that I didn't realize 
that I was missing early on. So that's that's you, fantastic. I know, I know we're running out of time. Can I share one quick story? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, good. Go. So one of the things I would say to watch out for, so another mistake I made is I, I got into a negotiation about buying a youth business early on. And in that, I made I made some really key mistakes in my business and it was on a handshake. Mm. Uh, I like to say we end up mutually screwing each other, which <laughs> sounds like he, he pulled one over on me and I you know, was too naive to figure out and I couldn't deliver and there was some stuff. And well, I, I felt a lot of shame from, and uh, for, for a number of years, and uh, I really had to process, uh, man, how, you know what, what did I learn? Did it really suck? Well, what I did was, is I pulled from other relationships. Like I, I actually did my business through my team. I was more on the back end. It didn't really build a lot of, or a lot of relationship inside. And uh, guys, that was a mistake. And the reason why is even if you do something that you don't really like that you did, if you learn from it and you ask yourself, what would I do different? How could I do it? And then you try to approach that person and reconcile. My dad, my dad, I've had a guy, a guy stole $80,000 from me. And uh, he tried reaching out to me like three years later because he was broke and wow. lots of different stuff happened. And, and I called my dad and I was like, you know, I'm this guy, this guy ripped me. My dad's like, no, no, you can't, you can't do it. Like, yeah. this is how you do it, right? He's like, if the guy called, he's like, how much money did he actually steal from you? He stole the deal that basically he contracted the deal. He did a deal himself. He made 83,000 bucks. Okay. And uh, that's like, how much, he, how much he steals? Like, 83. He's like, tell him to write you a check for $10,000 and you guys can start at zero. He's like, take his phone call, talk to him, be nice. But be like, dude, you did me wrong. You're in deficit. Write me a check for $10,000 and we can, we can start a relationship over. I hope. And if you don't have the money, let's work something out. Right. And that was really good advice because it, it not only for that person, when I talked to them of not holding grudges and being weird, but yeah. also being able to be like, you know what, if I make a mistake, I can make it right. Right. I can make choose right. to be a different person. And when you do that, it builds that confidence in you. And uh, when I build that confidence in me and I can trust my own word, right. If I tell you something and I know I'm going to do it. And if I, if I do something wrong that I'm going to own up to it. We're like, right. dude, I'm going to make it right. Dude, there's so much conviction in your own self. You can't not win. Yeah. I mean, and so yeah. anyway, relationships are huge guys. And if you guys make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. You can pick it up. You can learn from it. You can make it right with the people you, you can try, you can try to make amends or move on and do better. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Last question is this, if you lost it all, Ron, what would you do? If I lost it all, I actually thought about this for a minute. And it's probably bad to think that I'm not 100% sure. But I would go into sales in some way or another. Yeah. What I would really do is if I ran out of money, I'd, I'd go through my network and I'd call everybody and tell them I needed an opportunity. And if you can't get, and this goes back to relationships, if you yeah. can't get a job or get an opportunity, I would say within six weeks, then you have a bad network. And so I would call around to my network because a lot of people know what I do know and they know what my strengths are and they know what my skills are. So if I lost everything, yeah, I'd call everybody and I'd explain my situation, explain what I'm looking for, and I'd help them along my run way and then I'd start my own business up again. Yeah. But as far as strat wholesaling, I think is the easy answer. You yeah. can make twenty thousand dollars in one deal. It's hard, but I there's no other way to make fast cash that I know of. Levels. Sounds like the answer is go back to basics, hone the skill set of sales, which is yes. wholesaling or working for somebody else. Yes. And, and eventually you'd be back to where you are. Yes. Absolutely. Well, guys, think of how many billionaires lost it all and went bankrupt, right? Like it just happens. And if, if you can fall back on your own skill, that's why if you can develop skills and you're good at sales and you have a work ethic, kind of hard to lose. Yeah, you might lose everything through a bad deal or an economy or whatever, but if you can provide value, like if I can provide value to you, like what you, I can, if you will believe that your life is better with me around, well, my value to you there. is going to make me more money. Yeah, exactly. Dude, this, this show has been not quite like the others. So I appreciate that. And thank you for that. Thank you for the opportunity to get to know you. How can someone listening today connect with you? Uh, I would say that email. the number one way I have a, I have a Facebook group. It's a small little group, but it's West Michigan real estate investor. It's very, very active in there. If you 
really want to connect with you. That's the number one way. I am, I'm going to go out on a limb here because it has helped me very, very well. And this is not traditional, but you can actually call me yeah. or text me and do that. And I might not respond to you, but I'll at least put you in my system. It's 214-735-7416. Two ways. To there you go. Well, we appreciate both of the chances to to reach out and connect. It again, the value drop today. We could we could we could culminate in in a in a whole course of of things going back between the two of us. So, I just so appreciate all the things that you put your hand to, your mind to, to have led you here today to to be able to drop the things that you did for the for the audience. So, we so appreciate you and I wish nothing but success for you. Thank you so much, Chaz. I really appreciate you. I know it's been awesome. Thank you for listening to Gathering the Kings today. I hope that you were able to pull out a few nuggets to go apply into your business right away. More importantly, though, I hope that you're realizing that it takes more to be successful than just being by yourself, doing it all on your own, carrying the weight all by yourself. What I have realized, not only in my own journey from multiple businesses and multiple different industries and now interviewing literally over two or 300 other very successful seven, eight and nine figure business owners is that it's tough to do it alone. And so Gathering the Kings literally exists to bring together successful entrepreneurs. In fact, we are putting together 1,000 kings, specifically who are grateful, but not done. We're intentionally assembling kings who fight tooth and nail for their business, family, and communities. And here's what we believe, that in the pursuit of excellence in those areas, that it ignites within us the responsibility to govern power and forge a lasting legacy. So if that relates and, and resonates with you, and you know that you need people around you, sharp, qualified, other very successful business owners, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. I want you to take a look at what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you to be part of our pursuit to 1,000 Kings. Talk soon.